Hello, and welcome to the Ermine Matters Podcast. I am your host, Mikey. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Mikey Jr., M-I-K-I-E-J-R, and on Instagram as Mikey underscore Jr. So let's get into it and tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I started knitting in 2011 in January at a Super Bowl party. Um, nothing too interesting. It was very much a group of us hanging out. Um, and a friend's like, hey, you want to learn how to knit? So I was like, sure, why not? So she handed me this big Karen one pound ball, some knitting needles, showed me how to cast on, and it just kind of took off from there. Um, I haven't really taken any classes. I'm mostly a YouTube and self-taught knitter. I think I've done pretty good for myself for that, so awesome. And I learned how to spin August of 2012. I am part of a nonprofit organization called the Society for Creative Anachronism, which is a historic reenactment group. And I learned how to spin through that. Um, yeah, we'll get more into that later and in, in down the road in future podcasts, but I like doing really cool reenactment stuff. Um, so why podcast? Oh, and sorry if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my show notes. A little bit nervous. Um, I wanted this podcast for two main reasons. One, to share what I love doing with those who share my interest. You know, as crafters, we get very passionate about what we do and we want to share it and we want to, you know, expose others to this wonderful pattern or this new yarn. And this could be a great avenue for that. Um, and also to interact with my favorite podcasters in a way that I can't really do through YouTube comments or through the Ravelry boards. Um, you know, some of my favorite podcasters being, you know, Kim and Sam from the Come Knit With Us podcast, Dave and Ellie from F.O. and Die, JB from JB Fibers podcast, and Josh Ricks from the Sort of a Knitter podcast, also of Geonitrix Designs. Um, so let's jump into it. Um, what I'm wearing, this is the Bankhead Hat by Susan Gourlay? Gourlay? Not really sure how to pronounce that. Um, it is in Madeline Tosh Pashmina in the Silver Box colorway, and I love it. It's so soft and amazing, and it's an addictive pattern. I've knit two or three of these, and I have another one or two already planned, so great pattern. Try it out. Well, works in progress. I I jumped on the bandwagon for Beekeeper's Quilt. I can't help it. They're so fun. So, I've knit quite a few already, so I'll just show you a few of my favorites. I'm trying to do one a day. Not really succeeding. So, I'll go a few days without doing something, then I'll do a burst of like six or seven. It works for me. I don't know what most of these yarns are. I got minis from friends, leftover skeins from other projects. Um, so, don't really have well documented. Oh, I am keeping them flat instead of stuffing them. I like the way they look better sewn together when they're flat. Um, not sure why, it just, it appeals to me more. And that's fine, you know. It's my blanket, it should, it should be perfect for me. And stuffed didn't, didn't really work for me, so. There's this really fun one with electric blue and yellow and some really dark navy. I don't, looks, can you tell? Yeah, it looks navy there. It's pretty tonal blue. I really like that one. Bright, bright red. It's looking, a, reading a little more orange than it does in person. It's really pretty honey colored one. This one is my favorite so far. I love it. This one, browns and greens and some nice bright pops of teal. That'll be a great one in there. And this one, I definitely know the yarn. It is Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in the Pop Rocks color. Not sure how I like knitting with singles for this pattern specifically, but I love the yarn. It's a 
graveyard. I am keeping the the hexy flats in just big tote bag that I had. So once it's filled up or until I feel like it'll be big enough, I'll be keeping the, the finished hexy flats in here. All right, what else am I working on? I am working on Scottish Nightmare by Josh, Josh Ricks, and it is in my Folly and Nonsense project bag. Oops, random string. And a link to her shop will be in the doobly-doo. I am using Cascade, where is it? Cascade Heritage Solids and Quattros. The red is number color 5663, and the tweed is 5761. And I love how they're working up together. Can't really see how tweedy the, the grays and whites are, but they're just so gorgeous. And that's what the, this one looks like in the ball. You can see all the grays and blacks and white. And here's the red. Oh, gorgeous color. Love this here. It is, it's a fantastic pattern. It's from Geonetrix Volume 1 Tragedies of the Bard. And all the patterns in this are based off of Shakespeare plays. Um, this one specifically is Macbeth. And I want to work through the entire collection. Not sure if I'm going to be able to. But that's my goal. All of Josh's patterns are just fantastic and um, highly recommend it. Try it. Slip stitches, fun textured and visual, visual work. Great pattern. I haven't had as much time to work on this as I would like to, mainly because I've been working on test knits and um, secret projects. But once I have a little bit more time, I will definitely be working on this more. And once again, this is my folly and nonsense project bag. It is a, it's a great size, has a nice big handle or, or to put my wrist through. And let's see if you can read the tag. Kind of, not really. Yeah, follynonsense.com. What else am I working on? I am working on a test net that I can't show but it is in my Bags by Terry bag, and I love this bag. Love, 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 love this bag. If you do not have a Bags by Terry bag, get one. Get a cute little zipper pull. It's got this little Bags by Terry thing, so I love it. I want more, I want more, I want them all. I really like project bags. I don't know if you can tell. Um, that's all for my works in progress right now. Um, finished objects. So, as I mentioned, I'm part of the Society for Creative Anachronism, and part of that is we have ceremonial figureheads, um, Baronage. And one of my friends recently stepped up into one of these roles. And so she is now the Baroness of Black Diamond, so I knit her a pouch. Um, the pattern is my own design. Um, I knit it out of Knit Picks palette. The yellow is canary, and the black is just black. Um, I braided a handle, fun little tassels, and the back is a different pattern. You can see the inside, it's all stranded color work, all carried in. Um, it's not lined or anything. I figured at this gauge, and with how short the floats are, since I carried in, caught them, um, it, there wouldn't be much snagging or much need for a lining. So we will see how that works. If it needs to be lined, I will definitely line it. I need to get this out in the mail to her, but I love how this came out so much. And some people from some of the VKNs that I do or attend um, have wanted a mitten, a fingerless mitt pattern or something based on this. So. I will be drafting up a fingerless mitt pattern with the back thing. I'm trying to figure out how to work the thumb right now um, since I've never really drafted a pattern before when it comes to shaping and like the human body part. So 
We'll see how that goes. It'll be fun. I, I, I'm enjoying it. It's a good mental exercise. I have also finished what I refer to as the hubby socks. These are knit in Madeline Tosh, Tosh sock. The toes, heels, and cuffs are in calligraphy. And the body of the sock is in Georgia O'Keeffe, I believe. And oh, look how gorgeous that tonal green is. It has some blues, some browns, and, and that silver. I love this yarn. It's a vanilla sock pattern. I did the Toes by Terry Toe as a test knit, and I love it. It's an anatomical toe. As you can see, it's shaped differently. And there is a distinct right and a distinct left. So you knit your left foot, you knit your right foot. Um, it's a dollar. It just recently came out within the last week and a half ago, I think. If, if you're looking for a toe that fits perfectly, I highly suggest this one. It's a recipe pattern where you input your stitch count and your gauge and all that, and then voila, the numbers happen, and boom toe. The heel is the Fish Lips Kiss Heel by Socks Therapist, and it is a dollar on Ravelry. Again, super great pattern. I love how it comes out in it fits perfectly. Um, I knit these for my husband and he loves them. He He's worn them a bit so far and I think he doesn't want to wear them too much so that way they don't get a hole or something but it happens. <laughs> I loved working with these. I was a little worried that the, the yarn would be a little rough as I was knitting with them but once I washed them it softened up amazingly. I was so, so, so impressed with how they washed up and they're so soft and so squishy. And now I need to make a pair for me. It's gotta happen. It's Madeline Tosh anyway, so it's it was going to happen. But now it must happen. What else? I knit a pair of socks for me. I am doing the brown bag sock of the month club where basically every month you knit a pair of socks. Um, I'm not doing the put 12 skeins in 12 different brown paper bags and then grab a bag and that's what you're working on. It's basically go to my stash, which you can see there, grab a skein of yarn for that month, make socks. This was my January pair and this is my February pair. They're a bit stretched out because um, I've already worn them quite a bit but oh, they're amazing. And you can see the gorgeous color purples and blues and oh, so pretty. Um, oh, I forgot to mention this is a toe up pattern. Um, the Toes by Terry Toe is only written for toe up right now. I think there's some anatomical toe patterns out there that are cuffed down. Not sure of that. Um, but this is a top down pattern. It is the um, Men's Basic Sock by Margaret Testa. Um, I also did this for the F.O. and Die Sock Knit Along, which runs from February 1st to March 31st. And link to their podcast and their Ravelry group in the uh, doobly-doo. The yarn I'm using is Fearless Fibers. It is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, 430 yards in the colorway Jana's Dream. From what I can tell, Fearless Fibers no longer dies, which is a shame because I want more of this yarn. It washed up and just, oh, it's so soft and wears so well. So I'm probably thinking I'm going to get a skein or two on D-Stash. Um, not sure yet, but probably, if I'm being honest, it probably will happen. Um, I love wearing these. I've worn them quite a few times, as you can tell by the cat hair and stretched outness. 
sorry that the socks aren't showing very well. I don't have sock blockers yet. I will fix that. I am a relatively new sock knitter as this is only my fourth pair of socks. Yeah, my fourth pair of socks and I've lit the, knit the last three pairs of socks since starting in January or December. Yes, December. So relatively new sock knitter. So still need to get a bunch of stuff. Now I'm just spinning. Um, I have two wheels. I have a Kromsky Sonata in the mahogany colorway. Love it. Spins like a dream. Have had no problems with it. It's what I do most of my spinning on. And then I have an Etrick wind wheel. Um, I have not seen many of those. Um, I got that as a gift and I am the fourth person to own it. So it's, it's like a legacy wheel that's been passed down. And I love it. It's so cool. I'm, I'm probably going to have to get a picture or two. Um, if I remember to do that, I will insert a picture. Um, but I just finished this skin of yarn. And I love it. It is so gorgeous. With the neon lime greens and the purples and the electric blues and all the shades in between. It is... Knitting color in the color daydreaming. It is their 8020 merino silk fiber base and I'm I haven't washed or um, Measured it yet, but I'm guessing it's between a fingering and a DK weight in some spots So probably average a sport weight Not sure on yardage though. I'll have to Measure that once I'm done washing and seeing where everything goes out. But now that that's done, what I will be spinning next. This is Into the World in the colorway What's This? And it is in 100% Superwash Merino. And so many pretty colors. Sorry about the crinkling. But orange and red and blue and purple and green and I love it. It's so pretty. Not sure how it's going to spin up. I'm, I'm probably going to try a fractal spin where if you haven't tried fractal spinning, you basically, you know, split the braid in half lengthwise and then one of the one, one of the splits you split again lengthwise and then spin those independently and then ply them together and then the way you, the way it's spun and plied creates a really cool effect and I like that. And I want to experiment more with that going forward. And I think this might be a really good uh, fiber to try that with. Ellie from the FO and I podcast said she has spun this and it is one of her favorites. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that's all I have for this week. Um, it's a little short. Um, probably a bit rushed. Not sure. But really excited to you know start on this journey and we'll see where it goes so i will talk to you guys next week bye mm -hmm.